Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second half of Lecture 13. Woohoo! It is so exciting because we're coming to the closure and the end of what is really um, going to be a happy day. Can I draw enough hearts in here? No. Can I have enough PowerPoint animations? No, but I have saved you from a little bit of my lip syncing love and only uh, giving you a little bit of shake about this organic land reactions. As you can see from this cartoon, it's really kind of a very cool little cartoon talking about these two little cations or what they're called, carbocations, and that one of them is a bad cation. Knock down that lamp. And that'll be much more clear to us after tomorrow's video of 14. Take a look at it if you want to be able to tell why that's a bad cat eye, not just for knocking, knocking over the lamp. It's kind of a preview. All right, let's get into the last and maybe least important piece most of the time for a leaving group that has to fall off our molecule. And all it is is we need to have one. So let's make sure we're clear about what makes a good leaving group. And one way to think of a good leaving group is it has to be kind of the antithesis of a really good nucleophile. Like if I really want to attack an electrophilic carbon, why would I ever want to fall off one? There you go. Should we just skip to the end of the slide? Should we just go, go, go right, right to the end? <laughs> right to the end of the slide? Okay, so let's be clear. Best leaving groups are stable, weak bases. Things that'll fall off and not necessarily relax, react back. So these are our halogens. We've already seen them this chloride as being a very popular leaving group in a lot of our examples. So chlorides are very popular leaving groups. What I want you to notice though is this weird leaving group down here, water. And how does water become a leaving group? And it only becomes a leaving group if it's on an actual substrate electrophilic carbon and it already has a positive charge on it. That's even more weird. So let me show you why that exists and how that molecule might even be formed. Oh, those are my two friends, mesylate and tosylate. They also make excellent leaving groups. We'll see their purpose in a second. But just to give you a sense of why, and you probably already know this, I'm like already speaking to the, preaching to the choir, why these are stable, negatively charged oxygens. Why are they so happy? Resonance, tons of it. And they can do resonance with the oxygens that are in that sulfate piece of your molecule. And these tosylates and mesylates make excellent leaving groups. And we'll see in a minute why you might need them. Okay, coming back to poor leaving groups. Let's say I have an alcohol on my actual molecule. I want it to act as a leaving group, but I've seen OH minus act as a great nucleophile. It's like, yes, I want to be a nucleophile. Please love being a nucleophile. So it would never fall off unless you do something to it. So what you can do is you can change it into the best leaving group possible by adding H plus. So if you add acid to your alcohols, you can turn them into great leaving groups because this molecule will want to lose and grab that bond and become water with two lone pairs as opposed to only one lone pair. Just can't wait to do that. So Adding acid to your alcohols will make your alcohols from bad leaving groups to really good ones. Okay? Cool. Now, what is up with these mesylates and tosylates? Well, this is the story I want to look at. Again, go through the category of all four parts of your reaction. I have an electrophilic carbon partially positive because it's bound to this alcohol hydroxide group, which is partially negative. And so we just saw in the last slide that that makes a poor leaving group. So what we could do 
is add a nucleophile to this and have nothing happen whatsoever. <clears throat> so this is one possible nucleophile out of our list of nucleophiles from the last lecture video. We could add and create anything, but if I wanted to make this specific ester from this specific alcohol, then I could use this acetate. Notice I put it in acetone, an aprotic solvent. Woohoo! Loves SN2, aprotic solvent. Yes! So I've tried to make this reaction go SN2 as best as possible, but the only problem is I have a really poor leaving group in OH. Wham. So I'm thinking, I got all my things in the pot. Let's just add some H plus and we'll turn that OH into a better leaving group. Yeah, let's do that. So over the arrow, I write H plus because all it's doing is making my leaving group better. And then, drum roll pre, please, I make uh, nothing happens. No reaction happens that I want. I don't get the ester I want. That's awful. And the reason is I have a good nucleophile, which is a base, and I just added an acid. So what reaction do you think really happened? Not nucleophilic substitution but acid base. I protonated my carboxylic acid conjugate base, and the product I made was the protonated form. And so I made a lot of acetic acid, and my reaction smelled like vinegar. <sighs> okay, but I don't want to do that. I want to make my ester. Ester, ester, ester. How do I get this to fall off without using acid? Is there a way that I, what can I do to get the OH off without using acid? So here it comes. Yay, crowd nice applause all around. Tosylates and mesylate the alcohol. Let's change our alcohol into a better leaving group before adding the nucleophile. And let's change our alcohol into what we call a tosylate or a mesylate. They do the exact same thing. And uh, I'll explain in a second why, you, why we are talking about both of them at all. But no acid is needed if you change your alcohol into a tosylate or mesylate. It'll act as a great leaving group and you can add your acetate here and create the ester and have happy days. Okay, so let's take a close look at this story and what's really going on with these mesylates and tosylates. First of all, the reason we want to use a tosylate or a mesylate is because they both do exactly the same thing. This is tosyl chloride, abbreviated TSCL, and it is always going to be swimming in purity which is that nitrogen containing molecule as its solvent. And I'll show you why in a minute. So this will allow us to create a new species, but mesylates are the same molecule. Essentially they are a chloromesylate is the sulfur version. And generally this is really a much easier one to write. It just has a methyl on the end of it. And so mesyl chloride, is also really helpful and does the exact same chemistry I'm about to show you. So why would we have both? Because one is on my stockroom shelf right now and the other one isn't. So sometimes in chemistry we will have you and show you like all sorts of different leaving groups, all these different halides with different leaving groups. Which one should I use? Well, whichever one you have around. So you have to go out and buy these chemicals. One might be cheaper. Tosyl chloride might be on sale this week. Woohoo! Let's go buy a bunch of tosyl chloride. And mesyl chloride might be in like purgatory and never coming out. Oh, I can't find any. It's done in the building. So, oftentimes in Orgoland, we will show you multiple ways to do the exact same chemistry because sometimes 
you will only have one or the other chemical in your actual lab. So that's why you're gonna see these. So let me show you the chemistry with the tosyl chloride, but keep in mind, it does the exact same chemistry with the mesyl chloride, and you can abbreviate mesyl chloride MSCl just like we abbreviate tosyl chloride TSCl. So this is tosyl chloride. You can see the chloride piece here. And here is the big, big, big piece of advice. Notice our alcohol on this molecule, I kept talking about it as a leaving group, but it could also act as a nucleophile. It's partially negatively charged. It's not a great nucleophile, but you know, it's not the O minus version, but it is a possible nucleophile. And I have a good leaving group up here in my chloride because it is also pulling electron density away. So I have an electrophilic, yep, look at that. It's an electrophilic sulfur atom. It's not an electrophilic carbon. So you can do SN2 chemistry on a sulfur. Whoa, okay. How are you supposed to memorize that? Wait, should I get that down on my flashcards? Where's my pack of flashcards to write that reaction down, that sulfur? No. Stop. Look at these two and just process. I have OH, which is a poor leaving group on itself. It's not just going to fall off. I put in tosyl chloride. Ooh, chloride. I've seen those fall off as leaving groups. Hey, that'll make that sulfur positive. That oxygen could fall in love with that sulfur. Because Nick told me, plus loves minus. So plus loves minus. Oh, and I might have done it down here. Let me see if I did. Oh, yeah. So plus loves minus. The Cl will fall off as this O falls on, and it uses one of its lone pairs. And so here is the Cl that left as a leaving group. But now notice my oxygen's a little uncomfortable. It's got a positive charge. Ah, electronegative atom with a positive charge. Not good. So, dun, 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 to the rescue. I add or make sure that every time I do tosyl chloride, I add pyridine. Pyridine is a nice little weak base that is non-nucleophilic, so it doesn't get in the way of any nucleophilic substitutions at all. All it wants to do is love H+. Plus. And so it'll pull this hydrogen off. And remember, we can't move positive charge with our arrows. So I will just show this H coming off and losing that pair of electrons goes right to this oxygen. So that oxygen can reclaim that as a lone pair and become nice and happy again with two lone pairs and I have made my tosylated molecule. So you can also abbreviate this as TS, um, OTS. We will see that often, that this piece gets abbreviated TS or MS if you're using the mesyl chloride. So what's really fascinating about this is notice I have stereochemistry too. See the wedges and dotted lines? And if the alcohol is acting nucleophilic, nothing is happening to this blue carbon in that process. There's no chemistry happening at that electrophilic carbon. Only the oxygen is putting on this beautiful new OTS leaving group. Okay, please feel free to pause this video, rerun this, even mute my voice just so you can see the chemistry over and over until it makes sense in your head. Really, really important. At this point, I can add my nucleophile and my aprotic solvent to my tosylated compound and do a beautiful nucleophilic substitution. I wonder if I drew the arrows. Hold on, just checking. Nope. So I'll draw arrows now where this can now go backside attack and push off the tosylate oxygen 
and notice that tosylated oxygen falls off as a negative charge now. But is that such a bad leaving group? This is a great leaving group. Remember why? Whoa. Resonance! Yes. So I have a much better leaving group that has no need for acid. I don't have to use acid. And now I can put any negatively charged nucleophile into my tosylated molecule, and the tosylate will fall off as a nice, happy leaving group, and my nucleophile will add, and I will make my ester. I will get inversion because it was able to do a backside attack. So all things are right in the world. Okay? Very cool. So. What else can alcohols turn into? Now that I can tosylate and mesylate alcohols, I want to do it with everything. I want to add nucleophiles to everything. Well, this is how you'll actually see this kind of problem on a homework or an exam. You notice a couple things. One is, I don't always have to write out the structure. Go ahead, you can use the abbreviated form of tosyl chloride, TSCL, as long as you write pyridine in. The other thing is notice I have to do this in two steps. I have to write one. I can't just write all of this at once because maybe these compounds will react with this one. So really this is two experiments in lab at once. I have to take my alcohol and I have to tosylate it first. And then I actually can isolate that tosylated molecule. I can grab it, throw it in the mass spec, the IR, whatever I want, put it in another pot, and then add the reagents I want to do my SN2 reaction with. Okay? And so tell me in class what you think the product of this reaction, this two step reaction is and see if any of these match what the product is you think would be made. And if not, feel free to write none of the above. You never know. One of these days, I'm going to make a multiple choice question where none of the above is actually the answer. I don't know many professors who do that. So someday. All right. We're about to come to a conclusion here about SN2. So let's make sure this is, we've already talked about nucleophiles for SN2. We've talked about leaving groups a little bit, electrophilic carbons, and we did touch on solvents that prefer aprotic versus protic due to our big iodides and stuff. So we've touched on every single part for SN2. And therefore, I just want to give you a little picture of all the possible functional groups that you can make so that even though you are focused on SN2 and what's needed for an SN2 reaction, don't lose sight of the ultimate goal in orgolane. We want to transform all our alkyl halides. So this is a halide. This is some substrate electrophile. That's attached to it. And we know it could be primary, secondary, tertiary, all kinds of things like that. And then we add our nucleophile to our alkyl halide, and we can produce all these beautiful functional groups. So keep that in mind. It's the true goal. And now back to our original slide that started all this chaos in nucleophilic substitution land, where we talked about these two different reactions and that this was our SN2 process. This is where I want you to notice that all of these molecules in the original reactant, a secondary aliphatic halide with OH minus, a good nucleophile, the only difference between these two is one I put in DMF and one I put in a very protic solvent. And notice as soon as I put it in a protic solvent, it goes off and does SN1. So. What about SN1? Hold on to your hats. That seems to be my favorite phase so far this summer. Hold on to your hats. Let's go venture into lecture 14 and see what all this stuff is about for SN1 and what's happening in SN1 that makes the nucleophile unimportant and not actually part of the chemical reaction or the reaction mechanism.
Okay? Please ask me questions. I love questions. All right. See you soon. Bye.